Stuart Forsyth, Australian Taxation Office. Nice Thanks for joining you. us. Um, what's it like as a taxation officer at a conference? Well, lots you know, when they people. go, oh, Stuart Forsyth, taxation, right? Lots of people want to talk to me. Um, yeah. Quite a lot of them want to run their hard cast case past me yeah. or have a bit of a chat about things. It's good. Okay. Uh, Spa's a, a big conference and a good conference, and I've, I think I've been to the last five and I've spoken at most of them. Yep. Yeah. And uh, enjoy it. What's the big issue for between the taxation department and self-managed superannuation funds? Uh, the big, well, there are two big issues really, and, and they are uh, around lodgement and related party dealings. Yeah. Um, if people are careful um, with related party dealings and um, they lodge their returns, um, we're generally um, pretty happy. Okay. Um, we don't make very many funds non-compliant. Um, we don't disqualify many trustees or many auditors, but. Um, we do have fairly um, stringent, strong powers that we do use, yeah. um, but obviously we try and use them only when we really have to. The Taxation Commission last year at the conference was here and talked about the strong powers, uh, and I think someone else referred to them as a really just a big blunt instrument. There's been some criticism that some of the penalties, certainly for excess contributions by mistake, which is, yeah. uh, you know, are quite penal? Are they possibly too penal? Would you look at those to... Well, you're getting into policy issues, but you've got yeah. to remember that excess contributions tax is a tax. Yeah. It's not meant as a penalty. It's a taxation event that's happened because there's too much money's been put in. Yeah. That's it. Um, so that's the way it's designed and that's the way it functions. Um, government's made a decision to um, about the $10,000 um, amount that can be withdrawn once off. Um, and that's been um, going through you know, going through the process at the moment. Um, but the nature of a tax is that it has a trigger event and yeah, yeah. it can be it can be tough. Yeah. Right. Is, it, is that the point though? Is it more of, is it a, uh, um, I mean, I know it's meant to be tough, but it's yeah. it's like, look, here's the penalty, just be smart and don't get caught. Just don't go there. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't think we've administered it in a harsh or arbitrary way at all. I think I think in some cases, uh, we certainly tried tried to do what we could in the, the scope of the law to soften the edges of it, but often you just, it's a tax, and the taxing event has happened, well, yeah. it's, it's a bit hard to uh, excuse the revenue. That's right. how the law works. Okay. Uh, are you excited by the uh, by the industry and the way it's growing and, and, and becoming more, you know, popular? Look, um, some years ago we, we did some analysis and, and discussion and we started to think about whether things were going to slow down, but they haven't. Yeah. It's 30,000 new funds a year. Yeah, it's um, amazing. Even, yeah, even after 07, when we had more than that, it's still stuck around that 30,000 a year. Um, I don't see any sign of it uh, slowing. Um, there are some things always that worry us, some things we're working on, but um, in general, we think um, things are going pretty well and is, the reform is, changes are going well. Is there a largest, uh, you know, a largest concern that you know, you'd like to sort of talk about? Um, look... My concern with all investment products is really whether people understand what they bought into, in, in, in the, into as a way of investments. Yeah. But the SMSF isn't really the problem most of the time. It's whether they've gone and done a limited recourse borrowing arrangement over an asset that arguably they shouldn't have, shouldn't have got that asset. They should, they should have waited and got a better asset. Yeah. And a lot of that isn't really my job as a regulator. A lot of that is down to the trustee's decision. Um, but sometimes it has consequences because in the long run, if they can't fund their liabilities, uh, that fund will become uh, a delinquent fund and fund in some way because it just can't meet, meet its payments. Right. Uh, so that stuff worries us a bit. Um, and it's, um, there were some draft regulations put out on Monday that we've got um, ASIC taking over a bit more of a role in relation to uh, okay. uh, licensing that area. So we'll see what happens out of that. But, uh, I think one of the other things that came up is, is, um, is if, you, if you can see the product, it's being used. Yep. Or see the event, you know. So if you've got a painting or a, you know, even a garage, there was something in the paper this morning about buying car spaces oh, in the right, city so. and yeah, and using putting that in a, in a fund. So yeah, so there's um, some stuff coming through on the collectibles. So like people have currently got collectibles. They've got five years from last the first of July last year to do something about it. Make yeah. sure they meet the new rules. Don't so is that a car or a watch or a painting? Yeah, or a... it can be any, any of okay. those things. And um, it, they really need to pay some attention to that early, okay. not wait for four years and 11 months and then run around. Right, OK. Um, and um, if they need help, um, the other thing is to write to us and ask questions. Ask the question. Um, 
we're not ogres. Um, we will. Look at you, not an ogre. Look at you. We do. We do try and help. Um, All right. And I mean, sometimes we're limited in what we can do. But yeah. Equally, I always think you're much better off telling us what's going on yeah. rather than hiding. And there's no doubt some trustees hide. I think that's the uh, advice we give to our children quite yeah. often. Tell yeah. us the truth, and we'll work it out. Good, yeah. Stuart. Thanks. Nice Andrew. to talk to you. Likewise.